people are always attracted to eye candy. The first month you send out a dashboard, one that actually works, people are going to be like, I love you. You're the best. This is so cool. Thank you so much. I had never seen this before. Second month, they're like, cool. Thanks for sending this. Third month, they put it into a folder and they never even got the email in the first place about the dashboard. Some of you know this. Some of you have been living this for the last three, four weeks. Some of you are like, eh, you know what? I, I need to be refreshed on it. So GA4 has API limits. They've always been there, but they just started enforcing them. Okay. So what about the GA4 limits with Looker Studio and what are some alternatives to that? Okay. So they started enforcing these uh, according to them on November 10th. People started noticing it maybe a week later, maybe right away, but it, you know, it started to become like just blowing up through November. To the point where we're like, let's let's just make it a, a brain gain topic here so we can at least have an opinion on it. Okay. So they started enforcing it in and it's not just for Looker Studio, which is sort of a thing that people think of. It's anybody that uses the API. It's just that Looker Studio inefficiently calls the Google Analytics for API. Okay. Now this is often a misunderstood thing that I want to explain really briefly here, but Looker Studio works on connectors, okay? So there's native connectors in Looker Studio, then there's third-party connectors. A native connector is basically just somebody at, at Looker Studio or, or at the GA4 team writing code to recognize the Google Analytics 4 reporting API. So even though they're native Google connectors, right? Even though they're natively listed without paying for anything inside Looker Studio, they are they are not the same thing as a direct connection to GA4. It's using the same API that you would use on Analytics Canvas, on Supermetrics, on any Power BI, any kind of business intelligence software. Okay, so I think that's an often a misunderstood thing is that, and, and maybe I've perpetuated that a little bit in the way that I explain it, but native connections, even though they're made by Google, there's somebody on the Google team, they are not the same thing as just them pulling data directly from GA4. They're they're also pulling in the same aggregated data that we all have. So I think that's a misunderstanding that that often comes forward is like Google Google Analytics 4 doesn't work with Looker Studio anymore and it's like okay what's the problem? The problem is that Google Analytics 4 started enforcing their clients and this Brian Stark guy <laughs> you've probably all seen this tweet very snarkily said it's not we're we're making you play by the same rules as everybody else. And um, that's obviously frustrating. Like, okay, well, you're so so. After 15 years, you're to, you're just taking away the 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 thing that we've been able to do. Now, we mentioned this last week, and and I'll always refer to this because it's updated constantly. But Ahmad Kanani from Siavach has is amazing, dude. Just in general, um, one of my, I mean, he is my go-to Looker Studio guy. He did a webinar with us, or a whole workshop with us earlier this year in, in April. Um, I think that this is probably among the best resources out there about just everything. Okay. So, so make sure you check out that link if you haven't seen this yet, but it's, it, it's a source of information, consolidated information for everybody but within there. I just want to call it a few points and also point you to the direction. So quotas, here's the quotas page from Google. Um, sorry, I didn't drop a link in there. My, that's my fault. We'll find that and drop a link in there for you in the future version. Um, they seem really generous, right? Like, okay, you can use 25,000 tokens a day. You can use 5,000 an hour, 1,250 per property per hour. Sounds amazing, right? But then this whole core current requests per property of 10 is where the thing happens. And that is concurrent workers pulling in a chart. So in, in theory, if you have, let's just say, just use the word 10. If you have 10 charts or graphs on your on a single page of a single report for your GA4, it will that that'll be fine, but the 11th one will break. Now, the problem is that even though it seems generous, the way that Looker Studio implements things is that they actually use more than one concurrent call to build us a, a chart, right? So they actually are, you they're calling the GA4 API at least twice for every single chart you see, for every scorecard, for everything. And so that's where this, this is like, it's, it's insane to think that if you have 10 charts on a page, you will have you're you're gone. You're a goner, right? That just won't happen, right? So if you have a and and again, I've perpetuated this. If you look at some of our dashboards, look at how many charts we have: one, two, three, four, and four. But that would be eight requests. And you see how this is broken. Like I didn't really I showed that this is broken before, and that that's ultimately the reason why some of these things break is because they just nerfed the entire GA4 API, and it's 
I mean, we can talk about it, but one of the things that that is is being discussed, and, and actually, if you look in this, actually, I don't know if I took a screenshot of it, but in Ahmad's article, Looker Studio is actually going to try to rewrite the connector and make it more efficient. So they're not going to do two calls every chart. That's one of the things they've committed to looking into is so they can make it more efficient. So they're not doing two API calls. I suspect that that they if even if they opened it to 20, that would solve 99% of the problems, right? So if they if they made it instead of 10 concurrent, they made it 20, that would solve a lot of problems. Now that's not going to solve enterprise reporting problems where you're doing multiple page reports for your client and, and when you're going crazy on it, you know. Um the other thing that, that to note is that and and if somebody if I'm wrong on this one, please correct me. But from what I understand is that every time that somebody hits your report and tries to refresh the data that also goes against your limit. And so if you're if if multiple if you've sent your dashboard out to 20 people, that works against you in the same way of having 20 charts would. Okay? So so their suggestions are you need to reduce traffic meaning only you look at your report you created instead of emailing that out or send, sending that to people or you reduce the number of charts on the page because of the inefficiencies of the connector. Okay? So if I got that wrong, feel free to correct me, but I'm pretty sure that's that's what's happening here is that every time that somebody refreshes the data, which if you send it out to a whole organization and they're looking at it, then somebody who's not you could easily break your chart. Okay. Now, that's sort of the background behind this thing, um, some of the color behind it, because honestly, I think the headlines are that Looker Studio doesn't support GA4. That's not true. It's that GA4 is... API has introduced a limit and enforced it. And then the other thing is Looker Studio's API feeding of GA4 is very inefficient and did not take into account that. So it's two different teams at a big company with over 100,000 employees not talking to each other. Okay. So that's that's ultimately what's happening there. Doesn't mean that it's, I mean, it, it and then we suffer. <laughs> this is like a daily occurrence these days, right? So, okay. So if you want my opinion, of course, I'm annoyed. I'd rather just have it work the way that it did because why wouldn't I? <laughs> like, I'm we're all naturally lazy. I put out nine dashboards and all of them are broken in some shape or form now, right? So we have to change them or fix them. Of course, I'm annoyed with that, pissed with that. Of course, I'm mad that I can't create one. Like, the GA3 just looks fine, yet GA4 for the merchandise store, which is the demo account that everybody uses, doesn't have that, still has that enforcement. They didn't think through it very well. Like basically, you can't use, you can't make a sample dashboard with data that you don't own anymore, right? Like it's because any because everybody can access the GA the API for the merchandise store, and so that's never going to happen, even if that was a 360 version. So yeah, always I'm mad, but again, when there's a door closes, I'm trying to find some windows for us. Okay, so let's look at the good side of things. Here's the windows. By enforcing quotas now, you're not going to have that sense of loss when this happens in July of 2023. Most people do not use GA4 as their primary reporting system right now. Okay, So you're losing something on a report that is not your primary reporting system. You still have Universal there. And now you can rebuild your reports gradually until that cut over time, as opposed to just, you know, you're, you got egg on your face and you can't finish the year for your clients. I don't think there's a single person out there who is doing annual reporting with GA4 as the only source, right? So I'm glad that it happened this year, then even January of next year, because of that reason, is that yes, now you have a 30-day warning to start building or 60-day warning, whatever it was, technically 45 days to do this, okay? So that's a bright side thing, Mr. Brightside. The other one is most charts are pointless and they're a waste of resources over time. I've long advocated that dashboards without context do more harm than good, and this just is that's just a continuation of that. You should lose use Looker Studio for eye candy, not analysis. Okay. Now, anybody who's taken my data studio course, the mastery course, that's what I advocate. I say you should never send a chart, you should never send a dashboard to your clients. You should never met them on a page. You should never use it in a way that that gets mass adoption because you're you're making it worse than good. Okay. Because you always want to present data with context and in, in a presentation or a narrative form. Okay. Presentation form meaning like this, this reporting template that I published on back before it was called Jeff Analytics, back before it was called Data Driven, it was called Knowledge Land. And I published it in 2014 on that site. And that it was like my number one piece of content forever is this reporting template. And it's basically a PowerPoint 
now Google Day or now Google Slides, where you just p- put the screenshots from Data Studio, Looker Studio. You just take these things in there, you put it into the deck, you say what you're what they're observing, and you tell them what they can do with it. Okay, so you're screenshotting. So if you're only a single user, you could still do that with this template. Um, I've been using this since 2009 with clients. But what I wanted to say here, the biggest thing that I want to put across is that you 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 always want to have context and you always want to do it in that form. And the format doesn't need to be super complicated, but you want to have something where you tell them how to look at the data. None of your clients are experts in data, right? If you're working for clients or if you're working inside of an organization, nobody is usually an expert in web data. And so when you send them a chart saying sessions are higher or visitors are there, they're like, well, what does that mean, right? They actually want you to do the analysis. Nobody in the world values a dashboard beyond the first month, maybe the second month, but never the third month. It's the reason why a lot of people come come to me who are trying to run an analytics or a Google Analytics business, and they wonder why they can't get clients to pay them beyond the first month. It's because they don't see the value in getting the same dashboard over and over again. They know that you set that up once and they know that you're not doing anything. And all you're doing is send them a data puke that they don't really find a lot of value in, okay? So that's that's the thing, that, that's a big thing for me is that's the difference between reporting and analysis.